Gordon Murray is one of the most legendary car designers of all time. He created the McLaren F1, and recently he said he's going to make a successor to the F1 called the T50 Supercar. It's going to have a 650 brake horsepower naturally aspirated V12, it's going to have a manual gearbox, and it's going to cost £2.5 million. Now, those are all normal supercar, hypercar figures, but there's one aspect of this car that I don't think people are making a big enough fuss about. Gordon Murray has said this is going to be a fan car, just like his crazy Brabham from the 1970s. We've got the Aston Martin Valkyrie coming, which has its crazy aero design by Adrian Newey, and we've got the Merc AMG 1 with its F1 Merc engine. But no one has ever created a fan car for the road until now, and that's a completely different kettle of fish. So how does a fan car actually work? Well, it's quite similar to all underbody aero. You want to create a low pressure area. Air wants to move from high pressure to low pressure. So if you create that area of low pressure, air rushes in to take its place, which can create suction. With a fan, the fan will suck air through, creating that low pressure area. The air comes rushing in and the car is sucked down onto the tarmac. Now to make a fan car even more effective, you can seal off the underbody of the car through skirts. That will maximise the underbody area of the car and will really cram the car down onto the tarmac, which means downforce has increased massively. Now, we're not sure how effective a fan on a road car is going to be because if you can't seal the car fully like the Brabham from the 70s, it may not be as effective. I'm sure Gordon Murray has thought of that, and even so, the amount of downforce a fan will create by itself will seriously impact the performance of a road car. Now, many people thought this technology was illegal, but Gordon Murray was very clever about it. The rule stated that a movable device couldn't be predominantly aerodynamic. So he went to a lawyer and really looked into that rule to see what it meant. What he said is that if the fan was doing 51% of one job and then only 49%, creating downforce, technically it would be legal. So what is a fan also good for? Cooling. He did his calculations and as long as 51% of the airflow was supplying the engine with cooling air and 49% of the airflow was used for downforce, technically it was legal. Driving a fan car is completely different from driving a normal downforce car. The fan runs off the gearbox, which means it's connected to the engine revs. The faster the engine is spinning, the faster the fan spins, and the more downforce you create. That means drivers had to enter corners at maximum revs to create the downforce and corner as fast as possible. So rather than downchanging and getting the revs fairly low in the car to take the corner and then accelerate out, they had to scream into the corner at high revs and then change up as they left the corner so that they could fly around as fast as possible. A fan car doesn't have that much of an advantage in fast corners, but in medium and low speed corners, the downforce can be ramped up and it can take it way quicker than most other F1 cars. Now you may be wondering, why are we filming this video in Red Bull's famous Hangar 7? Well, just over there is the closest thing we've had to a fan car since the Brabham of the 70s. the Red Bull X2010. This car was conceptualized by Adrian Newey, the famous F1 designer, to be the fastest car around a track in the world. So the rule book was firmly thrown in the bin. So what have we got? An incredibly aerodynamic design, really sleek cockpit and bodywork in general, enclosed front wheels and even wheel covers to reduce drag as much as possible. Now you may think for it to be the fastest car on track it would have to have a massive rear wing but actually the rear wing on this car is relatively small and that's because of the fan directly below it creating all the downforce. Now this car is supposed to have a four cylinder turbo engine creating just under 1500 horsepower which runs the fan and creates the downforce. So what are the stats on this car? Well, it's supposed to create 8G in a corner, which, compared to 6G of a normal F1 car, is pretty colossal. And theoretically, a top speed of 310 miles per hour. And if you ever played this car in a game, it gets there incredibly quickly. Now, Red Bull ran a simulation of the Nürburgring GP track, and this car was 20 seconds a lap quicker than Seb Vettel's Red Bull at the time, which is over there somewhere. So this car, it's really cool to see it in person, but it's only ever been in a game. Imagine if something like this made it to real life.
Gordon Murray's fan car dream has stayed dormant for decades after being shelved, but it seems it won't be long until a car like that actually exists and is road legal. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and we want you guys to use your imagination. If you could pick one car to attach a fan like this to, what would it be? Tell us in the comments below.